After continuous updates and improvements from Zen Studios, I reconsidered taking my own life in order to offer some insight into more tables for the latest installation of pinball effects so that you can decide for yourself which bundles to pick up if you haven't already. Uh, yes. A Samurai's Vengeance invites you to restore honor to your ancestors by fighting a family of alcoholics. I hope she's not too drunk this time. Each adversary offers a distinct multi-phase battle that unfolds on the main playfield and upper arena where you can frantically flail your flippers or execute critical hits around the outside. Strength is built by the spinner, while wits is raised by alternating orbits, which multiplies critical attacks. Dicking around during a battle may result in a premature ejection, so cross the bridge to halt the timer or slam the bumpers to build back resolve. A mini-boss will emerge after two enemies have been bested, and defeating all four will incite a group fight, followed by a grand finale. The freedom of choice allows anyone to experience most of the table while they search for strategies to exploit each opponent's unique impotence to the point where it becomes personal. Like Tanuki offering one of his balls if you show him mercy. Take it easy. Mysterious Island begins by selecting a homeless person with their own special survival skills. Your primary focus should be to gather resources in order to craft tools, while the four playfield objectives unfold naturally. Food can be acquired by hooking ringworms with a spinner followed by a cross shot to the pond. The counter is in the bottom right corner which is hard to see, and the main display is just as bad thanks to its tiny typeface and outline. Iron is a critical late game material that's tricky to grind, since you need to keep opening the path to the volcano playfield, blending finicky mechanics with sheer frustration. There's misleading callouts and conflicting synergy, like when you're trying to reach the upper playfield but they're telling you to shoot pests because you accidentally began coastal hunting. And forget about ball saves since the auto launch tends to throw a sinker unless you plan on spending long hours on Vern's miserable island. Where's our savior now? The object of Super League Football is to remove as many of the other players' shirts as necessary to score. You can reach the other team's box by lighting both in lanes, then making a long or cross shot. Sessions are timed, so expect some half-time happy hour and to carry scores across multiple matches. Boring the audience will deplete your pass meter and put you on the D, where you'll need to hurry up by responding to three shots or give up a goal trying. It's easy to keep the ball in play thanks to extra flippers in the out lanes. Locking balls in any of the three sinkholes will activate a player and result in a multi-ball celebration after a goal. Once all the players are lit, the balls go gold, which is effectively the wizard mode, and super jackpots count towards the in-game tally, and spelling words tosses another ball onto the pitch to keep the excitement going. And just like professional athletes, taking a dive in the sinkhole sometimes triggers a penalty. They'll be looking to create a good opportunity. That's a fine save from the goalkeeper. World Cup Soccer returns to 1994 to defend the city of Los Angeles from being invaded by Germany. You can start a ball lock by shooting five buildups at the orbit, ramps, or striker hole next to the goal, which also holds some nice rewards, such as skipping three cities or an extra ball if you drain Washington, D.C. You can progress across the country by scoring tickets on the upper rollovers and ramps, but don't forget to pick up TV awards for a high-stakes side task at the final draw scoop, which is lit at the beginning of the game and every time four goals are scored. There's a magna save no one remembers, since it's not that reliable, considering how fast the table fights back, but it's available to activate on the lower right-hand side after passing the left rollover. The soccer ball is made of rubber and adds a nice spin to your attacks on the goalkeeper. And there's a hidden kickout triggered by a flipper if you need assistance sneaking past his tiny shorts. The object of Dr. Dude is to light up the excellent ray so you can receive gender-affirming treatment. You're a dude! The first step is to improve your personality which can be done by hitting each of the flashing targets three times to steady the colored lights. Red is made by nailing the innocuous stand-up target next to the center ramp. The greens are lit by hitting the magnet on the left-hand side, and the yellow lights are scored by clearing the chattering teeth underneath the cheese box. Once that's done, hitting the Mix Master activates the upper left lock, which will upgrade your wardrobe and start a multi-ball, where you can shoot the ramp for jackpots. 
rinse and repeat and eventually become a super dude for a chance at a gazillion points. There's also reflex targets situated at the top, to the right of the bumpers, that increases the reward for scoring 1-2-3 in succession, which is probably the easiest shot to see among all the schizophrenic scenery. You're a major dude! Space Shuttle has you rescuing astronauts that are stranded above Earth due to a lack of merit-based hiring practices. Negative, you must redock. Your main mission is to dock some balls and start a multi-ball, then redock them to win the jackpot. There's two sets of drop targets that spell Shuttle and Station, whose awards are randomized and can be changed by teabagging the target on the right. One of them is a bonus ball, which rewards extra time at the end of your game for you to reflect on your failed expedition. Stop and Frisk is started by hitting the drop target in front of the ramp and can be multiplied by making the USA rollovers that no one can see under the upper platform. Space Shuttle still succeeds thanks to its open playfield that doesn't include inner slingshots and lands an old school vibe that I appreciate when I want to experience something different. Actual experience and mileage may vary. Consult your local pinball dealer before re-entry. Funhouse has you hanging around till midnight so you can sink your balls into the mouth of a carnival worker. Begin by advancing the clock through making shots until it reaches 11.30. Then aim for the hidden hallway to administer roofies and put Rudy to sleep. After popping him in the jaw with a side flipper, multi-ball will start so you can score more millions by aiming for the trap door through the lower cross shot. It can be reopened by making the ramp, increasing by a million all the way up to 10, or until you crap out. Fail, and you can relock your ball in the hall for a chance at sloppy seconds, where you can rely on the dead flip coming out the side hole to set you up for the next shot up the middle. There are six awards at the mystery mirror that can be lit by smashing Rudy's face. Collect them all to start a super frenzy. Funhouse has a nice and flowy gameplay loop that encourages ball control. And don't forget to jiggle your balls around his mouth if they get stuck. You're making me very unhappy. Remember when someone kickstarted a card game based on blowing up animals and raised over $8 million? Exploding Kitten's pick up and play approach is reflected in its playfield, where objectives are started by simply rotating the spinner. See the Future is a sweet multi-ball, and probably the most lucrative, since you can aim for a jackpot after finding the five cards. You don't need to complete the main missions to reach the finale as long as you survive, which is basically a combination of all the modes happening at once, followed by a jackpot round. There's also seven side tasks, like spelling melon or taco cat twice, which will add more points during defuse, so choose that round last. The realistic physics seem easier than normal, probably because floaty balls tend to drift towards the outlanes, so try switching it up if you're having the same issue. And don't forget to hit the vortex on the upper playfield three times to clean up some crap. Is that a litter box? Gloomhaven showcases the true nature of RPGs by locking you in a grindy dungeon. It's all about taking out drop targets with the help of the elements from the spinner and group attacks from the ramp. You can also use the left orbit to boost your damage, which can be used during free play to hire four mercenaries for multi-ball after spelling Haven through the in-lanes. Once you've managed to defeat all the baddies, it's back to battling more foes before you can beat the boss. Then unlock the treasure chest and grab the loot. And you have to do all this without losing a ball for each of the five scenarios, plus the wizard mode, which is a total trip. The problem is that the main mission sinkhole also activates the shop and side quests that send you to the basement as punishment for trying to progress. So just win one for a free ball and XP, then focus on the scenarios, or Merc Multiball, if you want to min-max your aggro and patience. Its stench is easily noticeable from a mile away. Terraforming Mars holds the key to colonizing space by having a woman yammer in your ear while watching your balls drop. Ball trajectory recalibrated. Begin by selecting one of six corporations that provide their own passive and active perks, which can be accidentally activated by using your trigger finger on the launch button. I recommend purple if you're trying to boost your score, or green to increase the timer, making it easier to complete all the modes, which can be started at the left sinkhole behind the drop targets. 
You only need to begin them all to reach the wizard round, except for Lake Marineris, which is required to initiate cloud seeding. I like this table because even if you miss the drop targets, it usually goes in the centrifugal toilet, bringing you closer to multiball. So it always feels like you're accomplishing something, with the incandescent glow making it easier to place shots, while the algae ball seamlessly simulates the physics of fecal matter. The object of Star Wars collectibles is to open all the figurines and discard the packaging in front of fanboys. This can be done by executing a tricky cross shot around the Death Star to initiate a hurry up, where you'll have a chance to collect up to three dolls. You can gather one from an additional death shot, while the other two can be obtained using the upper left flipper hidden behind the toy chandelier. This is made significantly more difficult since there aren't any clear camera angles, so check back when they improve the views. If you're still struggling and just want to put in a decent score, I recommend spamming the blue light for Falcon Awards. Then there's the four-way combo to begin the one in a million shot, where you might need to switch the wing on the TIE Fighter with the launch button, and keep an eye on certain bundles you can make to multiply the base value of jackpots, which can increase the chance of moving out of your parents' house. Don't break your action figures! The Mandalorian revolves around eight chapters of Star Wars revisionism that follows a bounty hunter whose pursuits are distracted by shooting endangered mudhorns. The first two missions must be done chronologically, while the next five can be tackled in any order. Scene 4 is probably my favorite, featuring a provocative multi-ball, followed by a game of footsie with a walker robot. They needed a hiding place. The main modes continue, even after a ball loss, and are followed by a hurry-up after completion, which makes progress relatively straightforward. However, it requires an increasing amount of ramp shots to start each subsequent scene, making later missions feel like a grind to get going. Other highlights include the Wizard Mode and the Flamethrower minigame activated by charging the outer left orbit, which is a surprisingly stable weapon given the various oxygen concentrations across a wide variety of atmospheric conditions. Let's test Mando's Flamethrower. Crypt of the Necrodancer has you flipping off the dead while dancing to dope beats. The ball isn't lost until your multiplier reaches zero which you can increase by making a shot in sync with the music. The objectives are divided into different zones that must be completed before the music ends. Missions might involve hitting all the active lanes, breaking blocks, or defeating turd monsters. Then you'll have a chance to shoot for jackpots, fumble around the bonus room, or visit the shop, where you'll be kicked out for being poor. I recommend holding onto the bomb until you get seven diamonds, so they let you in and sell you the ring to increase combos. The cadence takes a while to acquiesce, and multiball can be questionable if it drains your health too soon, but it still provides unique vibes and stays true to the original game, which can be described as a rhythm-based roguelike chess, except without all the international scandals. <laughs> Godzilla vs. Kong is an epic showdown that determines who gets to rip the head off the voice actors. The storyline can be started by spamming the finicky sinkhole at the front of the playfield. Each quest begins a frenzy that's pretty much the same, give or take a target, including the wizard mode. At least you can continue where you left off if you lose a ball. And there's a handful of easy freebies to pick up at the right sinkhole. These can be activated by hitting the push target on the left three times, over-triggering your kickbacks by the bumper sinkhole, or completing Apex Multiball, which starts after seven shots up the cross ramp. This mechanic pairs well with the main missions by offering more leeway when pulling off tricky shots without the risk of a ball drain. It's a straightforward table that starts to flow after disabling the excessive exposition from the Screenwriters Guild via the sound menu. Retreat, squad! Retreat! In Titan Truth 246, Godzilla has totally wiped out- Godzilla's main squeeze is all about the long shots, while unwittingly completing quest lines, which includes battling gods around the orbit, or breaking into the Wuhan lab three times. The third mission is Ruler of the Ocean, and consists of two phases. Kong Hunt and Knock Knock, the latter being particularly tricky as you attempt to hit the side panels on the left ten times without accidentally locking the ball in the nearby vortex. If you do, you'll need to start over by shooting up the right lane and ramp again, 
and they included a timer, just in case you begin to find some rhythm. There's an easy free ball during the mini-game, which features Zen's signature input delay. I'm guessing they do this to make it feel more mechanical, but they really should look into making these video modes more responsive. Spelling Gojira on the right loop opens the ball lock up the middle for Destruction Multiball, and the wizard mode receives an honorable mention. Kong's main missions can be started by making the left cave hole until the king grabs your balls. I wonder what's going to happen next. The modes can be selected in any order and are a highlight of the legendary pinball pack. Avoiding the laser has you rethinking your way around the playfield, while gravity shift turns things upside down. Disable the pop-up scores if you're struggling to see the lanes. This is also a good time to pick up kickbacks, since there's no punishment for ball drains. The difficulty is felt by a strict timer and failing the hidden ramps, but at least you'll usually receive a free fall award for your troubles. It's also one of those tables where the fake wizard mode comes before the real finale, where I noticed most of the cameras were disabled, leaving only the first three to cycle through, which is a feature I wish I had the entire time. And this table guide wouldn't be complete without mentioning some notable side modes, such as electrocuting your balls or collecting kidney stones. Swoop in and collect them. I wonder what their purpose is. Trolls was designed around hideous looking creatures and equally awful singing to discourage Western civilization from having children. Sing it together. There's three main quests that can be started by making shots to the spider hole or up the tree ramp or completing each lane to spell trolls. Missions pick up after a ball drain and synergize with some of the side quests because of the multiple balls, making it easier to feed the spider or knock out the meandering sperm. You can pick up extra balls by maxing out the multiplier through the top rollovers, activating all the super modes like ramps and bumpers, completing both multi-balls, or reaching the wizard round for the first time. It can be difficult to see the ball given the colorful play field, which is another reason they should add ball skins, like they did in Pinball M. Oh, let me hug it! I also recommend playing with the creepy commentary turned down, or run the risk of your neighbors calling the police. Little slappy, make daddy happy. How to Train Your Dragon holds the record for the shortest time to reach the wizard round. Almost! You need to make two quick shots around the orbit. Hit the captive balls in alternating order and touch the dragon's wing. After all three objectives are complete, the following trip to the multiball sinkhole will begin the finale, which may offer less lucrative scoring opportunities than regular gameplay. There's a couple other mini games, like Spelling Astrid, which disables the lower flippers while you attempt cross shots, Hi, Astrid. and the catapult launch where you have to time your shots according to the spinning disc which looks pretty involved when you first start playing, but really just acts as a ball lock while you continue to focus on the same couple lanes. There's a Magna save that can be stacked by hitting the rightmost target and slapping the side of the bumper, and that pretty much explains everything there is about how to drain your lizard. What is that? The goal of Kung Fu Panda is to knock the turd burglar into the four standing targets until he opens the toilet. Entering the hole will start one of six training missions that include hitting drop targets and collecting dumplings. There's an upper playfield where you switch levers to redirect raw sewage into the village, and plenty of multi-ball from spelling words up the ramps. Reaching the wizard round is only half of the battle, since you can also collect toys by completing certain tasks, such as hitting the spinner or bumper enough times during the main missions. Each accolade will initiate a multi-ball that can help complete the current quest, and also awards a bonus, such as a score boost or stackable kickbacks. I also appreciate the limited and functional callouts, unlike other tables that constantly accost you with dialogue, along with the soothing soundtrack that effectuates a zen-like experience. The object of Garfield is to consume lasagna until you develop type 2 diabetes. This is ridiculous. Hitting the fridge changes it to a TV and switches the center diverter. Two of the main modes can be started by shooting the outer lanes three times. Three shots to the armchair while the television is active will begin TV time. And bouncing off the bumpers will start Feed Me. 
Initiating the four main quests will light the wizard mode under Garfield. Mouse multiball begins by hitting the trash to open the holes for ball locks. Spinning the pizza lights a hurry up at the center orbit where you can lock up to six balls for bigger jackpots. My only issue is that some of the physics coming off the upper right flipper seem to break the space-time continuum, and Garfield sounds different than I remember, who was voiced by Lorenzo Music back in the day. I've heard of fast food, but this is ridiculous. Nom, nom, nom. Speaking of voices, did you realize my entire voiceover is synthetically generated using technology from Eleven Labs? Since I no longer have the time or patience to do countless audio recordings, I uploaded a two-minute sample of me speaking and was able to clone my voice so that it generates a clean and tidy mp3 of whatever I write. Now I'm able to focus more on articulating my thoughts with word phrases instead of juggling gigabytes of audio files. This channel would be dormant if it weren't for the revolutionary tool by Eleven Labs. It's also great if you're struggling to talk after losing your faculties or want to speak in a different language. Sabes a qué me refiero? It's great for content creators, school projects, video resumes, or just dicking around. Click the link in the description to get started. And don't forget to blast this video across the internet if you want to see more.